if I just think of like all the infrastructure that's been deployed and TCP IP and everything that we use on the internet today and that companies rely on, you said this is much bigger than chat GPT moment. And it sounds like it's crazy big. And when you do have access to a quantum node that is large enough, you'll be able to compromise all of that traffic starting now, T0. And so everything that we think is confidential today becomes plain text at that point. The problem is every website, every network connection, every VPN is going to be affected by this, right? Yes. 100 qubits, you can get 100,000 qubits in the next two years. And so by doing that, now you can run an algorithm that requires 100,000 qubits on a distributed quantum node or a distributed quantum data center that could be available way faster than you ever thought, which means that your encryption, my friend, is not safe. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble back with the amazing Vjoy. Vjoy, great to have you on the show again. Always a pleasure. So you are the man I talk to when it comes to quantum computing. It seems like things are rapidly progressing. Can you give us an update about what's happening? If you think about quantum computing, I mean, we've all seen the transformer or the chat GPT moment where there was a step function change in capabilities available to us for computing and it changed the game. I mean, it changed the way humans do work. And that was a step function. That was a paradigm shift. Quantum is going to be like 100x bigger than that because the entirety of computer science theory would have to be rewritten for that to happen. And it's imminent. That paradigm shift is imminent because I recently drew a graph and we plotted the number of announcements of significance in quantum computing over the past few decades. Yep. And the graph is just going exponentially high, which tells you that something is just about to crack open and just make our lives incredibly different. And so that's what's happening. When we last spoke, sorry, you were showing me a new chip that Cisco had developed and you said all these changes and lots of announcements happening. So give us some updates since we last spoke and then, you know, how long do you think it's going to be before all encryption is broken? Well, uh, if you have a timeline in mind, yep. I would actually reduce that by a fifth. Oh, wow. At least. Oh, wow. And the reason for that is, I mean, we at Cisco, we are a distributed computing company. Yep. So we are in the business of building a network that connects servers in the classical world. So think about all of these cloud data centers. We yep. are in the business of building a network of fabric that connects all of these servers to enable distributed quantum computing. Uh, sorry, distributed computing, whereby you can run much larger workloads than you would be able to run on a singular machine. Yeah. And that's the whole thesis behind scale out. And with quantum, we're trying to approach the same design pattern. So we're saying, yes, whereas all of these computing companies have a roadmap that talks about 100 qubits today, maybe 1,000 qubits in a couple of years, 100,000 qubits in maybe 10 years. For any practical application, like even compromising security, yeah. we are looking for five to 10 years as a horizon if you're using a singular quantum machine. Okay. But we just came in and changed the game. We said, we're going to connect all of these machines. So instead of 100 qubits, you can get 100,000 qubits in the next two years. And so by doing that, now you can run an algorithm that requires 100,000 qubits on a distributed quantum node or a distributed quantum data center that could be available way faster than you ever thought, which means that your encryption, my friend, is not safe. Wow. Okay. So you, you, see, you said five to 10 years, but reduce that by a fifth. So perhaps in two and a half years, three years, we might have that? I, I, I believe that in the next two to three years, we will see distributed quantum computing take shape, where we are taking a bunch of these quantum nodes from various vendors, all based on different technologies. They don't, they don't have to be the same kind of technology. And we'll be able to connect that through a fabric and run algorithms and workloads in a distributed manner within a data center. I believe that that's going to happen in the next three years, for sure. Wow. The problem is every website, every network connection, every VPN is going to be affected by this, right? Yes. And so encryption mechanism, Diffie-Hellman or RSA, that's the key exchange mechanism that we use today, yep. primarily. Yeah. That is susceptible for compromise if and when these nodes come online. And even as we wait for those, there's this whole class of attacks called store now, and harvest later attacks. Yeah, a lot of governments doing that, right? So explain that story for people who don't know. Yeah, so the, the, the simple idea is that I tap into your network, either physically or through a route hijack. Yeah. And I store all your traffic yeah. today. And maybe I have access to quantum nodes today. Maybe I don't. Some nation states we feel do have access today. But, oh, let's wow. say, but let's say they don't. Yeah. Even in that case, you would store all of this traffic, which is highly classified, confidential. And when you do have access to a quantum node that is large enough, you'll be able to compromise all of that traffic starting now, 
T0. And so everything that we think is confidential today becomes plain text at that point. Which, to you and me, if we're buying socks on Amazon, it's not a big deal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's also temporal. I don't care. Yeah. But for governments, for yeah. federal agencies, for financial agencies, for healthcare, for retail, for power grids, I mean, this thing becomes really, really critical. So that's what we're facing today. And so there is a stopgap measure that we can deploy today to okay. make things... To, to, to help us buy time, yep. literally. And that is post-quantum cryptography. And so this is a software change. So think of it as a new version of uh, TLS. Okay. A new version of SSL and, and, and uh, HTTPS. And it's based on newer encryption algorithms that we feel, and I say feel, we feel are resistant to quantum attacks. And the reason I say we feel is because one of these standards actually got compromised a while ago, two, two years ago got compromised on a laptop within a week. No okay. So it's very hard to prove and say that this is provably quantum safe. Yep. That's where real quantum mechanics comes in, quantum computing comes in, and quantum networking comes in. Well, I mean, it sounds, if I just think of like all the infrastructure that's been deployed and TCP IP and everything that we use on the internet today and that companies rely on, you said this is much bigger than chat GPT moment. And it sounds like it's crazy big. Yeah, so I think there, there are multiple dimensions to this. So one is the encryption problem that I'll get into a little bit more uh, in a second. But the other dimension to look at is why even bother with quantum computing? Forget the networking part of okay. it. So why even bother with quantum computing? And there's a Feynman quote, and I'm going to butcher it, but I can tell you the 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 TLDR of yeah. the quote. Is, yep. and, and he uses a bunch of curse words in there, so you should check it out. I mean, it's, it's amazing. But he he's credited with uh, inventing quantum com- computing. And his quote is that nature is quantum. And so you cannot simulate nature using classical computing. Yeah. Because you're trying to f- force fit something that it's not. And so when you think about nature-oriented problems, so drug discovery or materials or just newer laws of physics and the way we understand the universe, I mean, these things, today we're trying to force fit it into classical computing that is deterministic. I mean, you hear all of these LLMs and foundation models going after this problem but in the end, you're force-fitting a nature simulation problem into classical compute. Yeah. And that's why you're running into these huge clusters, and even those are not enough, and I need more and more and more. Yeah. If you take the same problems and simulate it using quantum computing, you get resolution in much smaller footprints. Okay. So it's, it's sustainable, it's small, it's quick. You can explore a much larger space more quickly than you can yep. with classical compute. So... That these whole classes of problems, like even logistics and, and supply chain problems, that traditionally we think of them as hard problems in computer science. So these are NP hard problems. And NP hard problems and hard problems actually become much easier to solve for because they are not exponential anymore. Yeah. When you deal with it in terms of qubits uh, and the complex, complex uh, the, the exponential spaces that they can explore uh, through quantum computing. Wow. So the question is, you know, how do we get there? Yeah, so we were talking about the sizes of quantum nodes that exist today. They're like yeah. 100 qubits, 150 usable qubits. But we've seen this problem and design pattern in the past where you keep scaling up. Yeah. So don't stop at 100. Yes, go to 1,000, go to 100,000 and so on. But then you also scale out. Yeah. And a combination of those two will get you what you need in terms of scale. And Cisco and the fact that we want to get into quantum networking, we are getting into quantum networking, is going to enable that scale out piece yeah. of this equation. So yeah. as compute vendors are scaling up, we are in the business of connecting all of these compute vendors together in a fabric, in a network to enable distributed quantum computing. And so the chip, excuse me, that we talked about May of this year yeah. is the first building block in hardware to enable quantum networking. And it generated 200 million entangled photons a second. And quantum networking actually works on the principles of entanglement, the principles of teleportation, where instead of sending packets from point A to point B, like in classical networking, we distribute entangled pairs of photons to every member in that network. And then that's it. And then one, when one node changes state, it's amazing. the other node gets that state change instantaneously. Yeah. This is the spooky action of a distance that Einstein used to talk about. Yep. It's happening on the network today. And it's happening at room temperature. It's happening on telecom frequencies at existing on existing fiber, which means... No ripping and replacing your networking infrastructure, which is the big deal yeah. here. So we announced that a while ago. And then just about a month ago, we announced a software stack okay. to tickle all of this and turn it on. And so we looked at 
new protocols. You talked about TCP IP. Yeah. This is a whole new class of protocols. Oh, so wow. Entanglement distribution, teleportation, detection. These are things that seem like voodoo and black magic, but they are pieces of software, classical software, that make a quantum network work. And then we announced a few applications above it. So the first one is network aware compiler. Okay. So that takes a quantum workload, a quantum algorithm, splits it and pushes it, schedules it across a network of quantum elements. So this is the first step towards doing distributed quantum computing. But it also allows you to plan for your environment, to work in a brownfield environment because we tackle heterogeneous nodes in the environment. So ion traps, photonic, et cetera, et cetera. So you can actually plan, schedule, upgrade, do all of those system-like things that you would do in a classical environment. You can do all of those things in a quantum network as well. So we announced that. And then we announced two special use cases for classical use cases. Okay. And that is the most exciting, David, because yes, all of this is great. Vijay, you're saying three years, maybe. Yep. I'm a skeptic. I'll think about it as five years. Exactly, yeah. But there are use cases of the quantum network, entanglement-based quantum network in classical computing today. Oh, wow. That is the most exciting to wow. us. And so we're getting a whole bunch of these design partners come to us. And these are classical use cases today. So the two use cases and the two uh, sort of software uh, demos that we released, one is called Quantum Sync. Okay. The other is called Quantum Alert. And if you want, I can get into the details of how they work. Yeah, go for it. Go for so, it. Yeah. So Quantum Sync... Very straightforward. It's like I take a photon entangled pair. Yep. I send you one of those. I have one of the other ones. And let's say we want to use this entangled pair as a starting gun or as a decision coordination mechanism. Yep. Where we both want to act on certain pieces of data or you want to run an algorithm, but we want to do it instantaneously. Yeah. A use case here is high frequency trading. Yeah. And so we all have the exact same data. But for fairness, I want to make sure that you sitting in Tokyo and me sitting in, I don't know, France, Paris. I just love those two cities, but, <laughs> but that's okay. We act on those pieces of data or run that algorithm at the same time. Yep. You cannot do that through a nah. standard no. classical network. But through entanglement-based teleportation, I change state and I say, I'm ready to go. And you instantaneously get that information saying, yep, we're ready to go as well. So the two of us end up running that algorithm at the same time. And that exists today. So the demo exists today, the stack, the software stack exists today, the building blocks more or less exist today. The place where we are actually saying, I'm hesitating, is we're not shipping it as product at scale today. So you can't buy hundreds of these. But it exists. But it exists. Oh, and wow. so we are working with design partners to actually build the solutions out for some of these end use cases like HFT. And once we are comfortable with those, we go into product at scale. Wow. Because, I mean, it feels like quantum, quantum, quantum. It's like it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, right? But the fact that you're saying something already exists today changes everything. Changes everything. And so the other one that we just uh, touched on is quantum alert. Okay. And you talked about security and when yep. we are there to, when are we going to break encryption as yep. it exists today? Yep. So, of course, you can go PQC. That's step one. I mean, everybody should do it. It's like hygiene. Yeah. Let's do PQC. And I think all of Cisco's devices will be PQC enabled pretty soon. So that's like basic hygiene. We should yep. do this. But if you're more paranoid, <laughs> if you don't know whether somebody has compromised those PQC algorithms, and you don't know when somebody will compromise those PQC algorithms, what you can do is alongside PQC, alongside even your standard TLS networks that exist today, the old networks, the old uh, HTTPS, you can deploy a simple quantum network. I mean, this is not tons of information. This is like a qubit at a time. Okay. And same thing, same principle. You get one pair, one of the pair, I get the other pair. And let's say an intruder comes in. Yep. And if you remember, I said these things are being sent over telecom frequencies, existing fiber. Yep. So I can send these things along existing traffic and existing networks. And if somebody comes in and taps into your network, guess what happens? I measured... The entanglement, which means the entanglement collapses at your end and my end. Yeah. So I will notice that my entangled state with you has disappeared, which means somebody is breaching yeah. into the network. So through the laws of physics, I can provably tell you wow. that somebody is actually intruding in your network. Wow. And you can deploy this in your network today. Wow. So that's a, that's a product that's that's being sold. So it's again, it's still, it's still demo stage. All of these things, I would say, anything to do with the quantum network, entanglement based 
quantum network. Still prototype phase. We are working with design partners, some of the more paranoid ones that we just talked about. Yep. Energy companies, fintech, and so on. And once we are comfortable with those use cases, that's the time to go into a product at scale. And I'm guessing a year. Wow. So by the end of 2026, we might see this in production. Um, I, I'm pretty confident that that'll happen. That's crazy. Vijoy, whenever I talk to you, my mind is blown. And you've done it again. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you for having me. 